Hey, it's John Buck. I'm back again, and I'm going to show you today the example of finding the moment generating function of a Gaussian. Very common PDF. Uh, and so uh, it's good to, good to be able to know that one already. So the moment generating function for a Gaussian. I'm going to do this for the standard Gaussian, which is to say that if x is distributed like the normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance, right, then we know the PDF will be uh, 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2. And so I'm going to start from my definition, the moment generating function mx of s is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the sx, and it's the expected value of e to the sx, so I plug this in for f of x, dx. So if I put that f of x in, I get e to the sx, 1 over square root 2 pi, e to the minus x squared over 2. If I want to simplify things a bit, I can pull the 1 over 2 pi out front. I can do minus infinity to plus infinity. And then I'm going to say this is, I'm going to group the exponential terms. I'll have e to the minus, and I can write this as x squared over 2. And then I'm going to say this will be a minus 2sx contributed from this term here. It's sort of a messy way to write it, but if I distributed the minus through and canceled the 2, I'd have that dx. And the reason that's helpful is to say, ooh, that's almost so close to a perfect square in the numerator, right? And so we can use the old algebra trick called completing the square in that exponent. Let's say I'm going to put this up here. And when I do that, I'm going to have e to the minus, let's say, if, if only I had this. It's sort of completing the square is like kind of wishful thinking. That you could say, if. I had that, I'd be golden because that whole numerator is a square. But if I'm going to multiply, if I'm going to add this term here, I need to sort of balance it with this term here, right? Because now if I put these together, I don't want to, but I'm sort of making things more complicated to make them simpler. I have minus s squared over 2 e to the plus s squared over 2. Those would cancel out. Exponent of 0 leaves me 1. But when I do this now, I can look at, at what, what the reason I did this. Let me um, uh, simplify things or move things around a little bit. I can say, well, A, I can pull, this doesn't depend on x. I can pull it out front, and when I write the rest of it down, it turns out to be a Gaussian. All right, so let me pull that e to the s squared out front. <coughs> Excuse me. I have 1 over 2 pi, then, the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of e to the minus, I can say this is x minus s quantity squared over 2 dx. This thing here, let me sort of outline it in blue. Well, the integrand here is the PDF for a, a Gaussian with a variance of 1 and a mean of s. And I'm integrating that from minus infinity to plus infinity. This has to be equal to 1 because this is a PDF integrated over the whole range from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in fact, this term drops out, leaving me 1, and so I'm done. I've actually found the moment generating function I started looking for by, by using completing the square that lets me simplify this. And what I'm left with is e to the s squared over 2. So the moment generating function for a unit Gaussian is, in fact, another exponential. So it's something very similar, just with a different scaling fraction. So it has the same functional form, I might say. So let's see how that, that works out in terms of, we say, well, the moment generating function should tell us the moments. So let's, uh, let's move to a new page and see how we can find the moments. Well, a good sanity check for any time I compute a moment-generating function, I start out by saying, well, the zeroth moment 
anything to the zero is one. So I better make sure that what I got with no derivatives, just evaluated at s equals zero, is that equal to one. And so I could say, well, e to the s squared over two, evaluated at s equals zero, is e to the zero, which is one. So that's a good sanity check. I often do that just when I've computed a new man, uh, new man, man, uh, moment generating function I'm not, I haven't done before to make sure I didn't make a dumb calculus mistake. If I want to find e to the x, again, we know what the answer is for, for this Gaussian because we started, but we just want to double check to see how everything works. Or if, if we didn't know, showing how we would find it. So dds of this evaluated at s equals 0. Well, the derivative of e to the s squared over 2 evaluated at s equals 0. Take the derivative of an exponential, I get the same thing back. But then with the chain rule, I take the derivative of the exponent, which would be 2s over 2, or s. So I plug s equals 0 into this, I get 0 times e to the 0, so that's 0 times 1, which is 0, which is the right mean, right? We started, if I go back a page and up here, right? I, I started out with the 0 mean Gaussian, so I know that's what the answer I should be is, but it's a good sanity check and also a chance for me to illustrate for you how this process of finding moments works from taking derivatives and plugging in. For the expected value of x squared, I just take the second derivative of the moment generating function. Right, so that would be, if I take what I had here a second ago, it would be dds of e to the s squared over 2. Right, because this is already the first derivative. And so I'm taking the, the derivative of this. Well, from the multiplication, I'll have take the derivative of s leaves me 1 times e to the s squared over 2, plus I get s times the derivative of that, which is s times another s e to the s squared over 2. Right, The derivative of e to the s squared over 2 is the same thing times the derivative of the exponent which gives me another s. When I plug s equals 0 into that, I end up with e to the 0 plus 0 squared times e to the 0, which is still going to be 1. Right? The, the second term vanishes, and what I'm left with is 1, which is, again, if I flip back a page, that's the right variance. I had a, a unit variance. Okay, so there's a good example of how I find the moment generating function for a Gaussian. It's again like taking a Laplace transform, and then how I showing how I can use the derivatives once I have it to find the moments first and second. I could go on to third or higher moments if I wanted. Okay, thank you.